Improv is a risky and exciting art form, and it requires a lot of courage to do it right. Bass teacher Martin DeMatt gave the class a list of rules about taking risks. And among the rules were statements like these. Greet everything with yes and. Notice that? Not yeah, but. <laughs> but yes and. Here's another rule. Say yes and you'll figure it out afterward. <laughs> and the fun is always on the other side of yes. <laughs> Tina Fay memorized every one of those rules. They came in handy when she was faced with new opportunities and challenges. Rather than giving in to fear or self-doubt, she would automatically focus on these rules. Because she used the yes rules as a guideline, she took on new challenges and she found success far beyond her expectations. What if your response to God's calling on your life? Yeah, but. Or yes, and. What if it's one of those? Which do you choose? What if you automatically followed the yes rules? Use those not just in your life, work, play, but in your relationship with God. How would it change your life? Do you trust God with your life without reservation? According to Pastor Randy Frazee, leaders can attract either fans or followers. Fans like the leader. They're attracted by the leader's personality or charisma. Followers, on the other hand, are attracted by the leader's vision. Followers want to be challenged by great goals. They want to commit to something larger than themselves. Among the crowds who came to see Jesus preach and teach, many were fans, but only a few were true followers. The disciples were not just fans. They were true followers. They were yes and men. They waited for the power from on high, and when they received it, they went out and they preached and taught and healed and performed miracles far beyond their own abilities. And today, Jesus' message is still proclaimed. His name is still worshipped, and His power is still available to people of every nation on earth. You and I have salvation and new life because one guy, roughly 2,000 years ago, a small band of men and women said, Yes, to Jesus' calling. But their work isn't finished. Christ is still looking for men and women who will say, yes, and. There's a well-known story about William Willimon, dean of chapel at Duke University. Willimon once received a phone call from a very irate father. The caller told Willimon, Seriously, I hold you personally responsible for this. He was angry because his graduate school bound daughter had decided, in his words, to throw it all away and do mission work in Haiti with the Presbyterian Church. The father screamed, isn't that absurd? She has a BS degree from Duke and she's going off to in Haiti. I hold you responsible for this. Willman said, why me? And the father said, you ingratiated yourself and filled her mind with all of this religious stuff. Willman was not easily intimidated and he asked the father, sir, weren't you the one who had her baptized? Well, yes, 
said the All Right Father. And didn't you take her to Sunday school when she was a little girl? Asked Wilma. Well, well, yes, said the father. And didn't you allow your daughter to go on those youth group ski trips to Colorado when she was in high school? Yes, but what does that have to do with anything? Sir, said Wilma, you're the reason she's throwing it all away. You introduced her to Jesus, not me. But, said the father, all we wanted was for her to be a Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> Willman replied, well, sorry, sir, but you messed up. You've gone and made a disciple. <laughs> the father was a yeah, but follower. And he didn't quite know what to do with his daughter. Because she said, yes, and. How about you? What is your response to God today? I pray that like those early disciples, your response is yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. Thanks be to God. Thank you.